tonight on Chronicle. Using ink and squeegee, he creates stunning silk screens of New Hampshire's natural beauty, the serographs of William Mitchell. My work is always about, you know, the pleasure of being outside in New Hampshire. Coastal scenes, uh, mountains, uh, rivers, forests. It's kind of my way of making little postcards, little moments that, you know, I like for others to enjoy. They're getting the picture. Cool. How Portsmouth kids are bringing their city into focus. It's so interesting that the people they capture in the communities, um, the different jobs, the daily goings on, that, you know, we weren't sure if they were going to really find that when they were doing this, and they totally did. Plus, Fritz Weatherby's New Hampshire. Janestown, McGregorville, and Finkenthal. They're all in Manchester. I'll tell you the story on New Hampshire Chronicle. That's next on Chronicle. In 1983, Riviere College saw the opportunity to collaborate with another Nashua institution that would benefit the whole community. The Riviere St. Joseph School of Nursing drew on the strengths of both institutions, combining classroom and clinical experiences to create better educated nurses. By 1993, the school had added three new programs and partnerships with healthcare agencies throughout the region, and today, the program stands alone here at Revere, but it still carries on that tradition. Now, students here perform clinical rotations and get practical experience in all types of nursing, community, health and medical, surgical, pediatrics, psychiatric nursing, obstetrics, and much more. And we are surrounded by what they affectionately know, uh, call the uh, Sims family. We have the Sims mom, the Sims baby, and they're what's known as high fidelity simulators. They can mimic the conditions or the symptoms that a real patient would, and they're a teaching tool for the nurses, the and, student nurses. And right now everybody's quiet, so I guess everybody feels just fine. And that is a good thing indeed. First up tonight, he's had his artwork displayed at the Olympics, on television, and even on a credit card. But none of that has changed seriograph artist William Mitchell. He can still be found making images of his favorite subject, scenic New Hampshire. And from his Dover studio, he creates works of art from handcrafted stencils, a single one for each color, all combining to create a final full color image. Here's an inside look into his process and how he captures the best of New Hampshire. <laughs> When I look at a scene, I see colors and shapes and patterns. I don't see a lot of uh, linear work. And I always appreciated the work of people like John Singer Sargent and Edward Hopper, who uh, color was like a uh, main thing in their work. And so uh, when I look at a rock, I see like the sun hitting that rock and seeing bright colors. I try to simplify what I'm looking at. The, the color is like the passion really in my work. I was an undergraduate at uh, State University of New York College at Oneonta and they had a silk screening class and I kind of snuck into the room one day to see what was going on there and I was just like totally absorbed by the process putting a big glob of um, silk screen ink on a piece of fabric and pushing that glob across the fabric onto a piece of paper to make a print. It was like this moment in my life where you know everything came together and I was like I want to do this you know I couldn't wait to get my hands on it and I've been doing it ever since for 30 years this kind of shows um, some of my process going from painting to print I'll do a watercolor painting sometimes of a, an area working out the idea of, of the, how many colors where do the colors go uh, what's the design and then this is the final final uh, print this is a print called Birches. So each color is printed with a different stencil, one at a time, all in registration to make the final print. I've done some commissions uh, for uh, different state groups. Uh, uh, New Hampshire Sierra Club commissioned me to do 100 prints for them. And uh, last year, uh, 2008, League of New Hampshire Craftsmen uh, commissioned me to do a, a print celebrating the 75th Annual Craftsman's Fair. Where I start is usually with a, a sketch a design idea and for this uh, particular print I did a, um, a four color uh, acrylic painting I enlarged it about two times into a, a, a pencil study to kind of get the shapes 
the organization of design. I put this underneath the, uh, the fabric and I trace all these pencil drawings on, directly onto the fabric with a marker. Originally, people used to use silk to stretch the silk screen frame, but today they use commercial polyester because it's a stronger material. Under here, you can see uh, where I've drawn on the fabric with a, a marker, indicating which areas I want to uh, block out for my last stencil, the orange. The type of printing I, I do is called serigraph. In serigraph, uh, when you hear the term silk screen or screen print or serigraph, they're all really talking about the same thing. Similar to block printing, um, silk screening has to have different stencils or plates for each color. I have a blue stencil, and then I went, went and printed a purple stencil over the blue, and then over here I printed a green stencil over the purple. So right now this is really a three color print. I'm going to come over to my, my silk screen here, and with a blockout fluid, I'm going to isolate certain areas of the fabric to just leave a, a stencil for the gold. So I use this uh, blue, like glue material, and I just paint it directly on the fabric. When, when it dries, the ink won't be able to go through that part of the fabric any longer. And I'll just be left with a, a stencil for the orange areas of my design. My work is always about, you know, the pleasure of being outside in New Hampshire. Coastal scenes, uh, mountains, uh, rivers, forests. It's kind of my way of making little postcards, little moments that, you know, like when I'm out in the woods hiking around, like this is what life is really about, like enjoying the moment and trying to bring, bring that moment back to my studio, working it out on paper for others to enjoy. Now I'm mixing a, my fourth color ink, the uh, gold. This is the color um, that's really most important in the design of the print because it adds the uh, light to the scene and it adds a lot of drama to the image. I'm trying to get that the right color of gold. I'm just gonna check this color out against my study. I think it's close enough. I think it'll look great on the finished print. The addition for this print is gonna be 30 copies. So I'm gonna grab one and I'm gonna put place it underneath the screen and then I'm gonna lower the screen onto the uh, print and push the ink through the fabric onto the print. Four color print. I decided uh, later in my life that I'd like to, like to teach and kind of pass on some of the things I know to younger artists, kind of bring up a new generation of artists and craftspeople here in New Hampshire. So about five years ago I went back to school and uh, completed my master's in education at University of New Hampshire and now I'm lucky to be teaching at Pittsfield Middle High School. I have a lot of energetic young artists and I'm really enjoying it. I think trying to expose young people to you know all sorts of things can kind of you know grab their imagination and take it somewhere that you know you never thought or something like me walking in that room and seeing someone silk screening uh, 30 years ago, like how that, just that moment kind of, you know, made my whole life experience like broader. It grabbed my attention all those years ago and it continues to fascinate me, frustrate me. There's not enough time really to do like what I want to do. Uh, so I can't really ever see myself like not doing it. People know, know me as a silk screen artist. Coming up, hanging in the hood. Coming up next. I like this one because I took it from down low so it looks bigger. It was amazing. I mean, Robin said to me, Nancy, I think they actually listened to you. 